Hello and welcome to a very special episode of Fun Bearable. I am Brad Rohr. I'm Ray. Think of a nickname. Manta Ray. No, don't stop. Now, Dicks. oh, now that's all that's in my head. <laughs> Manta. Oh, no. I'm Ray C. Urchin. No, I don't want to be one. Hi, I'm Ray. Turtle Power Harrington. Nice, nice. And I'm Ground Chuck Staten. Ground wow. Chuck's one of them. That's yeah. pretty good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right my head. We are a podcast called Fun Bearable. Thanks to those of you who are new here. We have a live show coming up in East Providence, Rhode Island at the Comedy Connection on Sunday, February 25th. Think of Providence, get closer to the ocean. Yeah. Yeah. It's, uh, it's going to be a night of stand-up sketch some improv all kinds of comedy just a super fun night and only a little bit of improv don't worry yes, yes. and uh yeah it's going to be kind of our weird shows like our old chuck and brad shows if you've gone to those it's going to be a new evolution of those it's our fun bearable winter funderland show go to funbearablepod.com for tickets and info and it's going to be like brad said on sunday february 25th at the comedy connection in east providence rhode island but today we have a very special episode of the podcast this is kind of like a dream come true for me, obviously. Uh, we've talked about the Ninja Turtles in the past in the podcast more than once. Uh, yeah, I'd say more than 100 times. Yeah, and I love the Ninja Turtles. Uh, I'm, a, I'm a child of the 80s. I was born in 1984, so I was big into the original Ninja Turtles cartoon series. And I was asked, begged, some would say, to moderate a panel at Rhode Island Comic Con 2023 uh, with all the original voices of the Ninja Turtles from the cartoon, as well as April O'Neil. Um, and we're just gonna go right to the panel right now. Stick around if this is the first time you're checking us out and come check out a little piece of the podcast afterwards. We're gonna close it with some good talks, but uh, I had a lot of fun with these guys. I appreciate their candor and their, their warmth. They were so sweet and enjoy that panel. Hey everybody, how you guys doing today? Are you enjoying your time at Rhode Island Comic Con? Yeah. Are you full of turtle power? Yeah. That's what I need to know. That's what I really need to know. Ladies and gentlemen, the reason you're all here, please put your hands together for Townsend Coleman, Rob Paulson, Barry Gordon, Cam Clark, and Renee Jacobs. Hi. Wow. We. This happens at my age. Oh my god. All, <laughs> all the time. It's an old. It's an old combat accident. <laughs> well, thank you all for lowering your entertainment standards for us. That's very sweet of you. How is everybody doing today? Well, yeah, this is great, isn't it? Yeah. Oh my god. <laughs> We're breathing. We're not in jail. Day's not over yet. So far, so good. <laughs> still, still walking upright. That's right. Yeah. Amazing. I love it. All right. So I have a few questions uh, for you, Fire and I, I do want to start by saying that the Ninja Turtles have made up ninety-five percent of my personality, and I think that probably goes for a lot of people. <laughs> I'm so sorry. Yeah. And I want to so say thank sorry. you for making me yeah. a human being. Wow. I want to know who's the other five percent. Yeah. <laughs> Weird Al. That, there you go. <laughs> Perfect. No wonder you're successful. Man. <laughs> That's yeah. right. All right, so I did have a question. Um, when you were originally cast, all of you, yeah. did you have any idea about the massive fandom that the Turtles <laughs> were creating at that time? I, I was aware of the comic book. I'm not right. a big comic book guy, but I knew that there was this really cool thing called Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. But certainly, I don't know that any of us, even the people who were... You know, Fred Wolf and his producers and all the writers, I don't know that anybody, anyone could have predicted this. Uh -huh. uh, it is yeah. a, a truly remarkable franchise. I mean, we've all been in Hollywood for a long time and had the incredible good fortune to work on a lot of stuff, but nothing, nothing is... Has, is as no pun intended ever green as Ninja Turtles. It's astonishing. And you know what? Something I thought about was that often when you get hired on a show, it's like, what's the pickup? Oh, it's already it's thirty or it's sixty four, whatever. They were so not sure 
that five. we did our what five? We five. did five. That we paid for yeah. by the toy company. Yeah, we just did five because who knows? Let's like not give series. an order for was, sixty. Yeah. yeah. So. And it was just the pilot. That was only the pilot that they were going to sell the show with. Yeah. Wow. Five. And was then they aired Christmas of like nineteen eighty seven. Eighty seven. Eighty eight. Um. Syndicated by Group W. Yeah. Um, they were not a network show. Generally, shows come out and are on, well, on Saturday morning. They used to be on ABC, CBS, NBC, and then they mm-hmm. would go to syndication. This is very unusual, kind of bass backwards. But, the, yeah, the, the toy company, Playmates, said, yeah, well, you know, we'll make you, we'll pay for the dough. And, wow. and to be sure, it was um, the, the commercial aspect of it is obviously... You know, it's, it's, yeah, it's huge. And I had not heard of the comic book, so when my yeah. agent called me and said, you're going to audition for a show called Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, I said, you must be smoking something very interesting. <laughs> <laughs> uh, um, because I really thought he was either putting me on or was having a, an attack. And, um, and yeah, so it was a, it was a very surprising. Cool. For me, it was a, it was the same. Robbie and I were working on a show called Fraggle Rock at the time. Yeah. And, <laughs> yeah. We got Boober right here. Yeah, I I was Boober, <laughs> and you were. And I was Gobo. Yeah. We're going exploring in outer space with my uncle traveling Matt. How about that? <laughs> Yeah, I got so, to be a talking trashy, trashy yeah, Marjorie the trashy. <laughs> Often yeah. my career has been spent in the garbage. <laughs> and so I was, but yeah. uh, the voice director on that series Stupid. came into one of our um, recording sessions for Fraggle Rock one day. He said, "You guys aren't going to believe what I'm going to be casting and directing next." He pulls out a copy of Ninja Turtle comic book out yeah. of her. So I guess Robbie, you'd heard of it. I'd, I'd heard never of heard it. of it. Yeah. Before, and I looked at it and I say, "Oh well, good luck with that." Yeah. I really did. I thought I had heard that it was from two down easters, uh, Kevin and Peter, up there in uh, Maine somewhere. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. New and, Hampshire. Uh, I thought somebody's been drinking a lot of bong water. <laughs> <laughs> and apparently they were, and it worked out great. <laughs> yeah. How about you, Renee? Hi. How you doing? <laughs> How did you, uh, how did you, did you have any idea about how big the Turtles were getting even at that time before it got to this massive following when you first were cast? No, I had no idea. I was excited to audition for a real person rather than a creature. <laughs> yeah. And, and that tell was... Them, <laughs> tell them about your audition and how you, Stu said, well, this is great. Well, what happened was um, I auditioned with probably every woman in Hollywood. There probably were probably about... 200 voiceover gotcha. actors. So we all show up at the at the studio. They show us a line drawing of the character, tell us she's in her 20s, she's a news reporter, and that's about it. So I did my audition, did a few takes, went home, got a call from my agent. You've got April O'Neil on the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, which I couldn't even say, because that didn't trip off the tongue very well at yeah. the beginning. <laughs> right. People went, what? And um, so I went to the first recording session, and you always would sit and you would rehearse it like a, a radio show. You'd not that any of you know what that is. <laughs> yeah. um, Once but, upon a time yeah. in a land far away. <laughs> and then, what is this thing? Radio? And then you and then you would um, take a break, and then you'd record it. So during the break, Stu came up to me. He was a very large man, and you know. Out of the studio, he was a nice guy, and in the studio, he was difficult, and he would smoke. And so he would take a long puff, puff off the cigarette, and he's like, you know, Renee, I didn't want you for this role. I know, right? How about that? That's, like, that's oh my beautiful God. lady who has got her mind. That's, that's I know, right? Really great. I wanted Cam for the role of yeah. April O'Neil. <laughs> Only because Cam has the wardrobe. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so that put a lot of confidence in me and then he said you know I played them all of the 200 auditions and they kept saying that's not April that's not April that's not April he says well I have one more and I don't think she's April and they yeah. played my audition and said that's April right so that's that's nobody you know. and you know where Stu is now taking a big dirt nap way to go Stu <laughs> <laughs> yeah that's why you win <laughs> that's hilarious that's, that's great, great. 
Um, all of you have been asked to return like decades after you were originally cast. You've all been part of Turtles projects way in the future. Mm -hmm. And I did want to ask how it felt to be part of, how it felt to be like a, uh, an important part of a continually growing universe because the Turtles continue to reach new audiences. Well, for a long time we weren't. I mean, because basically there was, there was a philosophy, and I think it made sense, that every kind of version of the Turtles, a, a new movie or whatever it would be, everything would be different. Everything yeah. would, would change. They broke that finally in one way in, in 2012 when they let Robbie play Donatello, which was very smart. But until then, we, we really weren't involved in any other version. And really, yeah. then, finally, finally, just a year or two ago. A year ago. A year ago. Is that all? We were asked to um, do a new video game. Oh, the best. And oh, they God. said, we want the original yeah. voices. Crazy. Yeah. You know, and I didn't know if I could get my voice. I mean, it's not hard for me to do Donatello because it's my voice. But but I didn't know if I could get a, you know maybe a little higher where where it had to go because you know I'm old. You mean, so, you mean you mean like the quick bunny? Yeah. Well, the quick bunny is something completely different, and you know you can fake that. Yeah. But yeah. see, you know, he's but still got it, baby. But Donatello, <laughs> you know, you gotta lift. But yeah, we did it, and what a kid. Oh my oh. God. My son is in so the video game business, and he was at PAX East, it was last yeah. year, yeah. when they pre uh, premiered that game. And he called me up and said, Dad, these people are freaking out <laughs> that you guys are in the game. And yeah. it was such, uh, we have to thank all of you guys, because we, you, know, you kind of lose track that there are people growing up with this game uh, continually. And this is what we see at all these lovely events. We see people who bring often their grandkids and their kids. And but I, I all love Ninja Turtles. Yeah, I did leave out an important reunion that we did have on oh. your show. Yeah. When the 2012 Turtles got to meet the 1987 Turtles. That was so cool. Yeah. Right. Right. And we got caught for that. And that, yeah, was, and, that and, was a joy. And, and, and Robbie's original Raphael on our series and his Donatello on the 2012 yeah. series. <laughs> Got to have this great scene together where yes. he was talking to himself. It was awesome. It was I got to I got to say that the breakthrough, uh, other than that, was and more deep for me was the commercial. Yes. Oh yes. Oh, is it, for is Honda. It, right, is it yeah. Honda? Yeah. Where y'all are now this age, right. mm -hmm. and we get a call to do a Christmas commercial. I mean, it gets me. Uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Um, where it says, "Get what? What was the the tagline? Get that." Uh, oh, remember? Remember when you got. Us for toys for to and, and, and he goes, and you got us for Christmas. Sorry, well, I'm sorry, I'm trying on your voice. Yeah. <laughs> um, you got us for Christmas, then you lost us at camp. Yeah. Anyway, so the suits, as they call oh, Madison it's Avenue, go, what does this generation, what is the sweetest spot for them? And it's your Christmas morning or that? your yes. birthday morning yeah. to sell cars. Yeah. Um, that's why I, I went. Whoa, whoa. Yeah. 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 And we walked into that studio and there were, I don't know, three or four young men and women, probably 30 yeah. ish and change. Mm -hmm. And they were freaking out. Oh, yeah. <laughs> They're like, would you mind signing me? Oh, my God, not at all. But it was just, uh, and, and all of these events in which we get to oh. be, we're so close and we love each other so much to be part of something that has created so much love is just, it's difficult to quantify. It's, it's astonishing, you know? And in fact, when Tony was mentioning the uh, trans-dimensional turtles episode where we kind of met each other, uh, that, I remember being in New York Comic Con, it was premiered there with Nickelodeon, and there were, there's probably a few thousand people in the room. It's a big show there. And they premiered that episode. And when they brought the lights up, there were mostly, I mean, lots of young men and women, but most of the guys were doing this. <laughs> yeah, awesome. It it's was just... remarkable. Yeah. Oh, man. And yeah. I just, wow. This, it, now, I think in the fullness of time, we all kind of understand this is a pretty big deal. Yeah. It's incredible. Yeah. Monstrous. Almost unparalleled, really, in terms of pop culture and the way that yeah. it's transformed like, through different medias. It's yeah. insane. I remember when we did 
was, it was uh, that uh, one of the shows in Texas we oh, did, yeah. there were a lot of servicemen mm. there. And I know this is going to sound cliche, but, you know, these guys, these soldiers, and, you know, blah, blah, and it's a big deal. Tat it out, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And like you just said, the tears. It's incredible. And can I have a hug and stuff? And it's like, what manner of power is this? Yeah. <laughs> it was, um, it, well, you got to know how, how much it means to all of us yeah. to meet you guys. When you come up to our tables and we hear the stories about what Ninja Turtles meant to you when you were six. And how Leonardo is your favorite. <laughs> And then, Raise your hand if Leo is your favorite. No, 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 no. no. My, my, Mikey, Mikey, Mikey. And so, and so we hear these stories from you guys having absolutely zero idea, oh my God. zero conception when we were recording this show, what it would mean to kids. And it wasn't until we started meeting you all at these Comic Cons and hearing the stories and seeing the look on your faces and, and, and seeing the tears. I mean, it's crazy. And you guys... Without you, we wouldn't even be. So thank you. Thank, thank you. you. Yeah. 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 The other amazing thing is, is, is in this business, you know, you lose touch. And yeah. it happens all the time. And I was retired, so I wasn't going out on the, you know, the, for things anymore. And so I hadn't seen these guys in 25 years. And, and actually... The first get together was Robbie, who brought us together for his um, radio, uh, his podcast. Um, uh, and then after that, we started to hear about, you know, Comic Con. Mm -hmm. Robbie said, "Well, you know, they've been asking for all four, and you want to go." And you know, I had no idea that this world existed, and so you know, we we said, "Yeah, you know, let's let's do it." <clears throat> and I mean, since then. I mean, we're doing more, but also we just, we're texting each other all the time. It's fantastic. I mean, I mean I, I'm an only child, but I mean, these are the, you know, the three brothers, brothers. and sisters yeah. that I never had. And, uh, and that's due to you. Yeah. That if, if it wasn't for you, that would not have happened. And so it's, it's really a blessing for us. Three, uh, four brothers and one really hot sister. <laughs> That's a perfect segue. <laughs> oh, if anyone your would like other career. <laughs> yeah. Did you see the Playboy where Renee? Yeah. <laughs> Please. I hated that picture. Uh, I with you, excuse me, but it is important that I say that it's very difficult to not notice April's de decolletage. It really is not. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. I did want to say, if anyone wants to ask questions, we have a microphone set up right here in the cool. middle. Cool. And if you want to line up, we're going to start going to questions in a minute. Far right away. Um, but I did want to ask, how did you each find the hook for the voices of each of your characters? Because that is an interesting aspect of it. Well, I, I, yeah, I just copied Cam. <laughs> he had and I just copied Tony. <laughs> he Literally. Had a, he had a great surfer voice back then. I thought, oh, that's not, okay. I could probably <laughs> learn that. And, you know, when, when we did our first episode, they had not decided whether Cam was going to be Michelangelo or Leonardo, and yeah. same with me, and they were going to decide at the session. So Stu, the voice director, said, Townie, why don't you do Michelangelo literally first? Literally flipped, literally flipped a coin. Yeah, it was like, <laughs> I mean, it was just a crapshoot. So I did Mikey as the, on the first pass, and then we were going to take a break and then do a second pass and switch roles. But that never happened. They and just, I'm going, teacher, excuse me, we're supposed, we're supposed to switch and see what, who's best for Michael and Yeah. So when I auditioned, they had used Sean Penn from Fast Times at Ridgemont High as the prototype for Michelangelo. That's perfect. Yeah, so they wanted kind of a surfer dude, and that's where I started. Yeah. That's amazing. Renee, how about you? Yeah. How did, how did you find what you did? Well... How was your Sean Penn impersonation? Who's, who's my Sean Penn? <laughs> <laughs> there were a number of uh, female reporters that were starting to become popular, Lisa McCree and, and, and different people who were on TV. So I just modeled them after the morning shows that I used to watch um, getting dressed in the morning. So, and, and it was really cool to be able to do that role. And, you know, like you guys have said, people come up to me, especially women, and say, 
April O'Neil inspired me to become all these different things, go into the military or uh, become a doctor, become a lawyer, become so many things. And they, they were not in families where they encouraged the women to think beyond um, things. They didn't think they could attain those things. And so April was an inspiration yeah. to a lot of young women, which makes me so proud. We, you know, the little voices didn't do much for those girls. <laughs> But April did. Yeah, that's amazing. And, and I, I have no answer for that. <laughs> I have no answer for that question. It was just my voice. So there was <laughs> no hook at all. I just talked. Well, and I, I got to tell you, and this is something that uh, Renee would not do on her own. But I have to tell you, you not only did Renee uh, inspire a generation of young women to push and reach farther, certainly. The apple didn't fall from the tree. Your beautiful daughter oh, yes. is a... Oh, hello. Yes. Yeah. Ariel, uh, Renee and David's gorgeous superstar daughter, is just one, what, lawyer of the year? Well, she's a, a, she's she's a, a DA. Pro prosecutor. Yeah, she's, a pro she's at the, in the LA DA's office, and she's a prosecutor. Uh, And she just won a huge. She just won she a just huge won case. A huge Check suit. this out. Do you well, guys know the actor Danny Masterson? Right. 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 My okay. daughter put him in prison. <laughs> my daughter put him in prison. Thank you. Isn't that great? So talk about my mommy was April O'Neil, and she she told me I can There's not a goddamn thing I can't do. Good for you. That's amazing. Good for you, honey. That's amazing. Mm. Right, we got. Questions. I think we will start going to the questions. How you doing, Hi. buddy? Hi, my name is Ryan McKenna. I was a huge Shuttles fan when I was growing up. I'm 37 now. Um, my question What the hell is wrong with you? <laughs> <laughs> Trust me, I know. I've met a lot of younger people. Um, my, my, my question is, um, what did you like the um, season 8, 9, and 10, you know, the darker season, or did you prefer the lighter touch of um, Turtles? Wait, wait me, I, 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 I have to tell you something. Go ahead. So whether you guys know this or not, but every season the suits would come in and say, this year, we're not doing that funny yeah. stuff. You guys have to make this serious. So stop it. <laughs> and so the first few episodes of each season, it'd be serious. And then they'd leave. And then these guys would start throwing the sand around in the sandbox again. <laughs> but they were darker. That's, that's true. Yeah, for sure. Um, the, the better question is, what do you prefer, I think? Well, I mean, I like the animation. Uh-huh. Yeah. They have more money. I mean, it could, yeah. <laughs> right. <laughs> that's, that's. I don't remember it as well as I did, but I have to go back. I just got this one episode. Oh, my yeah. goodness. That's right. Thank you, madam. <laughs> Very kind of you. Hi. My name is Brett Bybell. I'm 24. I'm from Medford, Massachusetts, and I've been a, kind of an off and on fan, but I'm getting back into it now. Well, good for you. It's about time. Because when I was <laughs> super Paramount Plus a while ago, this is more of a very heartfelt question because the series is actually approaching its 40th anniversary next year. Yeah. It's pretty crazy. So, yeah, it is. looking back on that, how does it make you feel that you've helped inspire 90s kids, 2000s kids, 2010s kids all over the world mm. to make this really kind of silly? cartoon series that has touched so many people. I, we still can't figure it out. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm, I'm, I'm being honest. I mean, yeah. it, it, it still stuns us, you know, and we're still trying to figure out, at least I am, what, what was yeah. it yeah, about right. the right. show that did that? And, you know, I've, I've gotten a chance to talk to some people, and some people have talked about the fact that, you know, it had a moral message, but it was still funny and it was relatable because the characters seemed human and real. And so there, there were a lot of different elements, apparently, that somehow came together to produce some magic. But if you ask me what it is, I couldn't tell you. You know, I think but part of it is uh, David Wise, who was the story mm -hmm. editor at the very beginning and created so much of yeah. what we are, you know, came up with the idea for the different bandana colors uh, and the different um, personalities for each of us. And it was, it was that, that somehow the, the four different personalities as well as April yeah. um, 
gave gave kids a choice yeah. about who they could relate to. I, that is, and I kind of never caught on to that early on, but m- many years later, in talking to you guys, I realized how brilliant that yeah. was right from the very beginning. People get very protective of, oh, no, I'm a Donatello guy. Yeah, I'm, yeah. A, I'm, a, <laughs> I'm a Michelangelo girl, and I, I totally get it. It is a yeah. very specific thing, and, and like it is a kind of a... I mean, it's, it's kind of like... Uh, John, Paul, George, and Ringo. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, when, when kids are born, I remember we never... <laughs> We never used to take my son to McDonald's when he was, you know, little. It's just one day he said, I want McDonald's. And I know that there's advertising, but it's, this is not dissimilar. I don't yeah. know how it happens, but we get people our age who bring their 35, 40-year-old kids. And our age, 42? Yeah. <laughs> 42 Canadian, which is about 65 U.S. Um, oh, that's good. That's but, great. It's, thank you, buddy. I just, I don't know. Uh, it, well, all of us, obviously, uh, it, it is an impossibly difficult thing to quantify what it means. We, we were in Abu Dhabi last year. And talk about, we're with these lovely people uh, in a, there were quite a few of them, right? All dressed, of course, in their traditional United Arab Emirates garb, going, Turtle power, kawabunga. And it was fantastic. And and now, I got to tell you, we fly a lot. And when we're, I'm flying into New York or L.A. or Miami, I think, holy shit. I bet that virtually every house I'm looking at has at least heard of Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Oh, yeah. And... and it's remarkable. I mean, okay, it- now I'm not going to be able to fly ever again without looking out the window, counting the houses, and who knows the term. Thank you. Thanks a lot. The only problem is that none of them are Leonardo people. So there's that. Ooh. Just well, tell them. Listen, well, Cammy's well, Rob, got- we met. Cammy has one, has one spectacular. Go ahead. Do, do the line that sums up Don- Leonardo. Go ahead. I think I think Sh- Sam should do it. <laughs> we gotta think of something fast. Thank you, Sam. <laughs> we gotta think of something fast. That's right. <laughs> yeah, You're welcome. And the Oscar goes to. <laughs> well, one of the great things about this Abu Dhabi trip was, you know, we'd run across these folks over there who had these perfect. Uh, uh, spoke perfect English yes. with no accent at all, and I would think. Wow, how did you learn to speak such great English? And I asked one young man that, and he just pointed at us and said, watching your cartoon when I was a kid. It's like, cool. That's it's amazing. Like, what? Oh, yeah. That's crazy. Amazing. Really. You meet people, sort of, you know, in L.A., we meet a lot of people from South America, Mexico, Ecuador, you know, United States, Canada, Mexico. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and, and often you'll say, uh, you know, somebody who doesn't speak in Ninja Turtles, Ninja Turtles, but you say, oh, Las Tortugas Ninjas, cowabunga. They, <laughs> isn't that right? It's incredible. Thank you for your question. Yeah. You're very Thank welcome. You. Thank you very much. Thank you for giving us all turtle power. And, and Thank you, buddy. Thank, Thank you, man. Very kind of you. While we're making the transition, I just wanted to tell a quick story about someone we met to this con, a gentleman named Tomash. Yeah, oh my God. It was and Tomáš is from Slovakia. Now, when I say he's from Slovakia, I don't mean he's from Slovakia and now lives here. He took a 12-hour flight from Slovakia. From Vienna. He drove to Vienna. And, yeah. Right. And then, I, and then I asked, I said, well, you know, and, and who all are you here to see, right? And he said... You guys, I said, you flew 12 hours? And he said, yeah, and I'm going back tomorrow. But, but he flew 12 hours. And I just assumed that when he was here, he met the lived here. That's what I thought. Originally right. from Slovakia. He said, no, I'm here just for the weekend to see you guys. And then he's going and back. The, but, and the, the story, he was telling me last night, I just, I said, Tomas, that this is really not only quite remarkable, um, but we, we don't even know how to thank you. And he was dead sober. He said, oh, no, 
No, I thank you. Um, uh, because, and I remember this, we all do. I remember in 1989 watching the Berlin Wall come down. Yeah. That was a huge deal. Yeah. And Slovakia, I think, was probably Czechoslovakia or Yugoslavia because it's now the yeah, Czech yeah. Republic yeah. and Slovakia. But they were uh, Soviet satellite states. They were behind the Iron Curtain. And Tomáš got very um, serious and said, um, when the wall came down, everyone was quite glad to be free. But the economy went right in the toilet. Uh, everybody lost their job. The inflation rate was out, a loaf of bread, all that stuff, 100 bucks. And it was the darkest period of, I, of mine and my family's lives. But Ninja Turtles. Yeah. Dot, dot, dot. And Crazy. that young man was serious as a freaking heart attack. And it to what these guys are talking about, that he would do that for this, and it meant so much to him that he could not stop thanking us. Are you kidding me? Yeah. So it's a big deal. Yeah. 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 Hi. That's awesome. <laughs> Follow that. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> nice to see you, Mingo. What's your name? Well, I guess it's Mingo. Yes, Brian Mingo. I'm 29. From, Hi. From New Bedford, Mass. Hey, Brian. New Bedford. How are you doing? Yeah. Very good. <sighs> yeah, a little bit. I'm sorry, pal. I'm just a big turd in a punch bowl. I can't. <laughs> you could say he's shell shocked. Yeah. <laughs> Well done. I guess I just bought this microphone. Yeah. <laughs> yes, sir. So, with watching the original show, one thing always stood out to me was Michelangelo's love of these extremely bizarre pizzas. Oh, yeah. And I wanted to know have you guys tried any of them in the years afterwards? <laughs> No. In reality, <laughs> yeah, right. I, in reality, no. no. Court, you know, Michelangelo's <laughs> favorite pizza is anchovy and hot fudge. Yeah. Well, I'm not a big anchovy fan, and probably not a lot of hot fudge on a pizza for me. But I know that there are YouTube videos out there that I have oh not seen, but I hear that they actually go ahead and try all the different pizzas throughout our entire series. <laughs> wow, <Yeah>. that's <laughs> what? Yeah. But that? pizza! <laughs> Thank you very much. Kevin. Thank you, buddy. Yeah, have you, awesome. have you been down to see Maurice LaMarche? Oh, yeah. How about that? Yeah, no. Oh, great. Thank you. Well, he's, you know, a Ghostbuster person, so well done. Thank you, Mingo. Amazing. Hi. 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 I'm Brian Thompson. I'm, I'm 35. I'm from Mount Holly, New Jersey. Nice to see you. Yes, yeah, see you too. Yes, and I met you the other week, remember? So, I, uh, was I an asshole? Cause... No, you weren't. <laughs> no, you yes, yeah, still. These guys yeah. don't tell me right well, away. Well, I have came to thank for telling me about this, by the way. So. You. Okay, so. Yeah, my question for you is, uh, I was, other than the main Turtles in April, what are some of your favorite side characters you did on the series that you had the most fun oh. doing? Oh, my! one of my favorite, Tony, did he did the Rat King, which yeah. I love. Yeah, I love doing Rat King and Usagi Ojimbo and uh, Muckman. Yeah. <laughs> and apparently I was a character named Razar, which I had no recollection of doing until we went in to record for the new uh, Turtle yeah. game, uh, yeah. Shredder's Revenge. And they said... Yeah, and you're Razar. And I'm like, I don't think I did that. Cause said, no, you did it. And I'm like, well, do you have a reference? Because I don't remember what he sounds like. And so they played it for me, and it was me, yeah. but it was a voice I had no recollection of doing. It, so. <laughs> I don't know. I, I did a character called Zach, who was like a little kid who wanted to be oh, a yeah, yeah, the turtle. Oh, yeah, the turtle right? episode. Yeah, That's and right. then yes. I think, oh, well, and these guys did um, Bebop and Rocksteady. Mm -hmm. yes. Well, yeah, but I mean, we were inside. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I'm not going to put us in that, uh, you know, position. <laughs> I don't know if sh this gal is in the room, but uh, she brought up a picture for me. You know, a lot of you have given us your oh my private goodness. artwork yeah. and stuff, and it's just amazing. She has a picture of Leo with this blobby guy. Are you? Anyway, this big blob, and I'm like going, oh, uh, I don't know who that <laughs> is, but <laughs> <laughs> thank you. you know. And she goes... And I can't remember the name. That's, you know, blah 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 from The Mask. Yeah, oh. So, which Robbie was. Uh -huh. yep. 
And I'm going, if you say so. Right. <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's just it, the whole experience. Often folks say, you know, what's your, what was your favorite memory? The, the whole nine yards. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you're working with people whom you choose to be your friends. And your job is to be creative and, and excited and leave it on the screen. And then you get to go around these places and, have, and you go home exhausted from saying thank you. Mm -hmm. Jesus Christ. It doesn't get any better, man. I will tell you my favorite moment. Go ahead. My first cartoon show was a remake of uh, 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 oh, shit. <laughs> Johnny Quest. <laughs> and I'm cast as Haji. Canceled! <laughs> um, and I go home and I tell everybody, I got my first show, da, 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 da. And then I'm at the agency's office shortly thereafter, after the first episode. Goes, Hi, Cam. Um, you're not going to be doing uh, Haji uh, anymore. What? What's what? Well, it just wasn't working out. The f something, something, something. And she goes, Rob Paulson will be playing Haji. <laughs> Yeah, let me take care of you right now. <laughs> here's, a, here's a 20 spot. Here's a 20 spot. Keep you, keep you quiet. But, but that also happens all the time. Yeah, I mean, right. all of us have been replaced. All Rob Paulson replaces everyone. That's what he's saying. <laughs> Basically. That's really where it's going. I can't tell you how many times I've been replaced by Rob. Yeah. Like, this is part of the bit. It's like actually a, a badge of honor. <laughs> yeah. But it, it, all of us have had the incredible good fortune of working on a bunch of stuff. And um, like Barry said, this, this whole opportunity to get um, Renee and all of us together pretty regularly throughout the year, three or four times anyway, it, it's, an, it's just like a giant dollop of impossibly sweet whipped cream on a career that none of us would have, would have thought that we'd still be having you know, Hollywood's pretty difficult. And the fact oh, you got okay. a bunch of people here who, um, you know, we were the entertainment at the Last Supper, so we're... Um, <laughs> Jesus, what a party that was. Ah, <laughs> and it was great until we did karaoke and then, you know, Judas got up and he did backstabbers, which I thought was really, for Judas, I thought, my God. But my poor attempt at ho comedy aside, we really... It, it, spits, it, it eats up and spits people out a lot. That's show business. Nobody forced any of us to do it. But the fact that we're here at our ages and we're, able, we're all healthy and we're doing this with all these lovely people, this is very rare. And we know it. Yeah. So thank you. Amazing. And thank, thank you. you for making my child amazing, by the way. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you, man. Pleasure. And I, I'm so sorry to say this, but this is going to have to be the last question because we are approaching 5 p.m. Oh, so no. But you can come to our tables and yes, ask whatever, ask whatever. Questions. Yeah, you ain't got to buy nothing. No. Just come on down to the tables if you want to. You ain't got to buy nothing. Just come on if you want to say hi. Awesome. I'm at table 27. <laughs> yes. Go How ahead. So I, am I the last question? This is the yes. last question. Oh, I just want to make sure I had a question. What's your name? Uh, my name's Alonzo. Uh, I'm an alcoholic. Oh, wait, no. no. <laughs> <laughs> my question actually related to another 80s comic that got turned into a Saturday morning cartoon that a few of you worked on called The Tick. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And I was just wondering if you guys had like any like favorite bits you had from going into those characters on that what show. What a show. What a oh, killer yeah. show. Towny yeah. just carried that whole freaking thing. It was really incredible, yeah. Well, it, it, it was yeah. yeah, it was such a riot to do, and of course, Robbie was uh, Arthur in seasons two and three. Cam was Deflator Peter Mouse, Mouse. <laughs> very was unfortunate Arthur, one. <laughs> <laughs> but it, oh my gosh, I mean, we it had such a great cast and so the many. The writing on that show oh. was insane, <laughs> unreal. That, the scripts were yeah. laugh out loud funny reading them. Ben just did. Incredible job. And yeah. I got to say that Kay Lenz, who played, for those of you who know the show, Maid. American, American Maid, Maid. Yeah. who I had huge crush. a yeah. huge crush on when I was a teenager until I realized I didn't have a crush on her. <laughs> <laughs> well, I had a crush on David Cassidy. <laughs> yeah, that's what I meant. I meant on your husband. Yeah. Because um, we also... Man, geek. Totally, man. As well, I got to meet Barbara Eden today and Paul Williams today. And How I'm like, about 
that. And I'm yeah. going, wait, I'm sounding like them because I'm saying, I had every one of your albums. And, uh. <laughs> and so we are not unlike you guys and have yeah no kidding hey let me tell you was and, and certainly no diss to Robbie but when I was cast oh please uh, diss Robbie <laughs> <laughs> but, but but because they had actual I, I was not the uh, original choice for the tick it was actually Ben Edlund who did oh, the I voice didn't know that of the of the of uh, the first episode he wrote he, it well he wrote it and created the yeah. character and the comic books and all that stuff but. Uh, yeah, so so I was walking the picket line on the uh, writer strike right. with Ben, with and he ben. told me this story. I had no idea. Yeah, and he said, "Well, you know, I was the tick on the first episode, and they decided that I wasn't right, and I really didn't feel like I was right." But, but he said, "But it was my dad who said you're not the tick." <laughs> <laughs> and I'm like, "Oh my gosh, that's brilliant!" And his dad was the one who actually drew the the original. Are um, you kidding me? His dad drew the uh, logo. For the tick, you oh know that. Uh, yeah. So, so I show up and and it was Mickey Dolenz yeah, from the Monkees who was playing Arthur for that season one. And I was such a huge Monkees fan. Sure. I, I mean, when I got to meet him for the first time, and I'm like, this is so weird. It's like all of a sudden I'm 12 again, playing, <laughs> you know, drunk. And and but here I'm the superhero, and he's my sidekick. Yeah. It's like it was so crazy yeah. to me. It was like, like these boys. Yeah. Are but then he was on Broadway, right? He um, went doing a play, play and couldn't continue with the series, and that's when they recast. And of course, the brilliant Rob Paulson here stepped in, and yeah, big surprise. <laughs> <laughs> you know, Mickey Dolenz is pissed off that I replaced him because <laughs> right. he also played Haji. I think. <laughs> right. <laughs> So thank you for that. The tick You're was welcome. just like oh, what's such amazing. Thank brother. you, man. Spoon! <laughs> and don't count your weasels before they pop, dink. Yeah. <laughs> Can I, we're wrapping it up, right? Yeah. Can we do a turtle power on three with everybody? Oh, please. please. With all you I'd guys. I love nothing more. Yeah, let's do it. <clears throat> okay. Let's stand. Okay. All right. Yeah, right. Ready? Okay. One, two, three. Turtle Thank you so much. Thanks, you guys. Thank you very much. Oh, it was amazing. That was amazing. Thank you.